Hi everyone, welcome to Study Windows. And today we are going to learn spherical mirror terminologies. We have already learned spherical mirror, its definition, its characteristics, its formation. And in this session we will learn various terminologies used in spherical mirror. If we know the terminologies, all other sessions will be very interesting and it will be understood very well. We have already learned plane mirror and its reflection. So what happens here? The reflection happens like this. This is the incident ray. This is reflected ray. And this line is the normal. And as for the laws of reflection, angle of incidence and angle of reflection are same. Now we'll take concave mirror and one convex mirror. Now this convex mirror and concave mirror, these mirrors are the part of a sphere and naturally the sphere will have a center. So this center is known as center of curvature and it is denoted as C. So what is center of curvature? It is the center of the sphere from which the mirrors are made. Sphere has a center. So definitely it will have a radius. So this radius is known as radius of curvature and it is denoted as capital R. Now if you observe both convex and concave mirror, it will have a center. It's nothing but a geometrical center. So this point is pole and it is denoted as capital B. If you make it into two parts, then center will divide in two ways. Or if you rotate this mirror in the pole, then it will round like this. So pole, pole is defined as the geometric center of spherical mirror. Again we'll take a convex mirror. We know the law of reflection in plane mirror. Now if you cut this convex mirror into very small pieces then all the pieces will look like plane mirror and here also the reflection happens and all the portion will obey the laws of reflection. If you see in this section light falls here and reflected so it obeys the laws of reflection in the same way here also it happens same thing and other section if you see this is the light this is the incident rays and it is falling here and reflected here also the same thing so all the portion are follows the laws of reflection even in the mid section also now this is the convex mirror and this white shaded line is the principal axis. Light falls on the convex mirror and reflected like this. So if you observe these reflected rays, these rays are not meeting a point. All are diverging, moving away. Convex mirror is known as diverging mirror. If you observe closely that you will see all the light rays coming from an imaginary point. This point is known as focus and it is denoted as capital F. And the same thing is applicable for concave mirror also. This is the concave mirror and this is the principal axis and light rays are coming from here and falling on the reflecting surface but here the reflected rays are meeting at a point and this point is known as focus so capital F this is converging here all the reflected rays are meeting at a point so this concave mirror is known as converging mirror so focus when incident rays to the spherical mirror are parallel to the principal axis, the reflected rays either actually intersect for 
concave mirror or appear to intersect like convex mirror at a point on principal axis because this focus is always on principal axis and this point is focus now it's a very interesting term that is focal length we have already learned reflection in convex mirror we see the p is the pole that is the geometric center of convex mirror and f is the focus now the distance between pole and focus is known as focal length and it is denoted as small f focal length means the distance between pole and focal point and for concave mirror we have learned the reflection already so this is the focus and this point is pole so the distance between focus and pole is focal length for concave mirror how do we define focal length then the distance between pole p and focal point f is known as focal length now take a convex mirror when the incident ray falls on convex mirror the area where the incident ray falls on the convex mirror is known as aperture it is nothing but basically the height of the convex mirror it is the same for concave mirror also so the height of the concave or convex mirror is known as the aperture if we block the light then the area of the spherical mirror will reduce so the height will reduce and the aperture will reduce so we have learned the basic terminologies for spherical mirror we'll take a quick recap so that it will keep it in our mind so pool means the geometrical center of convex mirror and concave mirror these are the center of curvature means center of sphere and this is the radius that is the radius of curvature and this is the main axis that is called principal axis it is going through pole and focus these lines are the focal length for both convex and concave mirror and this is the aperture the height of the convex and concave mirror